Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining lecture today. And today we're going to be talking about nuclear chemistry. And so as the name implies, nuclear chemistry is all about what happens within the nucleus of an atom. And particularly, we're going to be looking at radioactive nuclei. When a nucleus of a radioactive element uh, decays, it actually breaks apart. And so it will spit off little particles and the main nucleus will become slightly smaller and it will actually be a different element because it's lost some protons or neutrons or both. And so this is just a cartoon showing one type of radioactive decay in which the nucleus of this uranium-238 atom is spitting off what's known as an alpha particle and the uranium is becoming thorium-234. So I don't stress about this image too much. We'll come back to this. So let's talk about isotopes. So when you're drawing the symbol of an isotope, you have the elemental symbol or the letter abbreviation for that element. And then we have the mass number written in the top left. And remember the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons. And then in the bottom left, we have the atomic number, which is the number of protons within the element. And so this is the symbol for iodine-131. And so in this chapter, our learning goal is to describe the different types of radiation known as alpha, beta, positron, and gamma radiation. So most elements that have atomic numbers 20 and higher have at least one or more isotopes with unstable nuclei. So recall that different elements can have different versions with different numbers of neutrons, and we call those isotopes. Some isotopes are completely stable, some are radioactive. And so most elements with more than 20 protons have at least one unstable version or one unstable isotope. And so an unstable nucleus is radioactive, meaning that it will emit small particles of energy called radiation in order to become more stable. And so there's four types of radioactive decay that we'll look at here. Unstable nuclei can emit alpha particles, beta particles, positrons, or gamma rays. And so these symbols in parentheses are the symbols for each of those types of radiation. An unstable element or an unstable isotope of an element is known as a radioisotope. So it's an isotope that is radioactive. And so when radiation is emitted, the radioisotope can undergo a change in the number of protons and or neutrons, and it may be converted into an atom of a different element. So once again, the symbols for these radioisotopes are shown in this format, where you have you know, the mass number in the top left and the atomic number in the bottom left. Or it can be written out in the word form, where you just write the element followed by the mass number. So this element here can also be written as iodine-131 or just I-131. So these are two different ways to express this radioisotope. This is easier to type out. This is easier when you're drawing it on an exam. So you should be familiar with both. So let's take, take a look at some common stable and radioactive isotopes. So let's look at magnesium, iodine, and uranium. There are stable isotopes for magnesium and iodine. Magnesium-24, which can be symbolized like this, or it can be written out as magnesium-24. And iodine-127 are completely stable, non-harmful. Uranium actually has no stable uh, isotopes. Every isotope of uranium is radioactive. And so here are some of the radioactive isotopes. So magnesium-23 is radioactive. Magnesium-27 is radioactive. 
iodine-125 and iodine-131 are radioisotopes. And uranium has two naturally occurring radioisotopes, uranium-235 and 238. So these are just some examples where you have a stable version of an element and then the unstable radioactive versions of the same element. So let's start looking at the types of radiation. The first type of radiation is known as alpha radiation, which is when a nucleus emits an alpha particle. An alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons all stuck together in a little cluster, which is basically the same thing as a helium nucleus. Helium is element number two, because it has two protons, and its mass number is four, because it also has two neutrons. And so an alpha particle is just a helium nucleus, is another way to think about it. The symbol for an alpha particle is this right here. Right? It's helium four. That's an alpha particle. A beta particle is a high energy electron with a charge of minus one, and it's formed when a neutron is changed into a proton. So a neutron can get broken apart into a proton and an electron. And the electron that gets spit off is really high in energy. And so the symbol for this beta particle looks like this, or you can just you know, write the beta but this is gonna be more useful later when we're doing calculations. And so the lowercase e here means electron. It has a mass number of zero because electrons have essentially no mass. And it has an atomic number of negative one because it has no protons and its charge is negative one. So this is the symbol for an electron or a beta particle. Third type of radiation we're gonna look at is positron emission. So a positron is abbreviated as beta with a plus sign or symbolized like so. A positron doesn't naturally occur for any long duration of time. As soon as these things are created, they interact immediately and are annihilated. <laughs> Um, they are, how do I explain this? It's like an electron, but positively charged, which seems weird, but they can exist for short periods of time, um, but we can't really isolate them. And once they come in contact with a regular electron, like I said, they just are annihilated. So these are very short lived particles that are also high in energy. So it's essentially just an electron with a positive charge. And the last type of radiation we're going to look at are gamma rays. Gamma rays are a type of light. Essentially, they're just photons, but they are photons with extremely high energy. And so the symbol for a gamma ray is gamma. Whoops, excuse me. And they have no mass and they have no charge. And so both zeros there in the symbol for a gamma ray. They're just high energy light. So here's a summary table showing the four different types of radiation, the symbols for them, and how they are formed, the mass number and the charge. And the bottom two here, proton and neutron, uh, you already learned this in the last chapter. These aren't types of radiation. These are just the symbols for a proton and the symbol for a neutron. So quick study check. Give the name and symbol for the following types of radiation. So alpha radiation emits what? It emits an alpha particle. And what is the symbol for the alpha particle? is H E four two. That is the symbol for an alpha particle. 
like we saw right here. What is the name and symbol for radiation that has a mass number of zero and an atomic number of plus one? So they're telling you that the mass number is zero, the atomic number is plus one. So what type of radiation had these symbols here? That's going to be the positron. So it's like an electron, but with an opposite charge. So we use the lowercase e there. Whoops, that looks bad. There we go. So that's the symbol for a positron. And what type of radiation represents high energy radiation released from the nucleus? So the extremely high energy radiation is the gamma rays. So the name is gamma ray, and the symbol is gamma, and it has a mass number of zero and an atomic number of zero. So that's the symbol for gamma ray. Let's talk about the biological effects of radiation. Radiation is extremely damaging to living tissues for a variety of reasons. When radiation strikes a molecule, it can do several things. It can knock away electrons, which turns those molecules into unstable ions. Radiation can interact with water molecules by removing electrons and producing H2O plus ions, which can then chemically react with other things in the body. Radiation can also destroy proteins or enzymes or DNA uh, in a variety of ways. And so you, you really want to limit the amount of exposure you have to radiation. Um, we use it medically, but we control how much you're exposed to, and we try to limit it for non-necessary procedures. So when radiation hits biological tissue, it causes damage. The cells that are most sensitive to radiation are those that undergo rapid division, such as bone marrow, skin, reproductive cells, and cancer cells. So because these cell types are replicating quickly, they don't have time to fix the damage from radiation before they replicate, and so they'll tend to replicate with the damage already. And so they're the most susceptible to um, the effects of the radiation. Let's look at protection from radiation. So the four types of radiation we looked at are not equal in terms of how damaging they are and how dangerous they are. So alpha particles are the biggest. They're two protons and two neutrons stuck together. Because of the biggest, they actually have the least penetrating ability. And so the, you know, thinnest piece of clothing or even paper is enough to stop alpha particles. A single sheet of paper and, you know, an alpha emitting isotope, the alpha particles will just stop when they hit the sheet of paper. So any clothing is enough to stop alpha radiation. For beta particles, you need a little bit thicker protection, but not much. Lab coat or gloves is enough to stop beta particles. Now for gamma rays, these are the highest energy and they can penetrate the furthest. And so you need a lead shield or a really thick concrete wall to protect you from gamma rays. The other way you can protect yourself instead of shielding yourself is just limit exposure. That's obviously the best, right? So if you know something is radioactive, you know, don't hang around next to it for a long period of time because you're just increasing the amount of exposure you have. So limit the amount of radiation exposure. you get. And the other way you can do that is by increasing the distance from the source. So different types of radiation only travel so far. So if you're standing further away from the radioactive source, you can be safer. So here's a chart showing the distance traveled in air for the different types of radiation. So alpha particles 
travel two to four centimeters in the air, about that far, right? So a piece of radioactive uranium is not really dangerous to you unless you're, you know, right next to it. it only travels about that far in air. So it's on the other side of the room, totally safe. Beta particles travel 200 to 300 centimeters. So about two to three meters, right? Like six to 10 feet. So if you're in the next room over from a beta emitter, you're probably safe. And gamma rays travel about 500 meters from the source, half a kilometer. That's pretty far. So something that emits gamma radiation can be, you know, next block over and still affecting you. So gamma radiation travels really far and is the most dangerous. So let's talk about how deep these different types of radiation can penetrate tissues. Alpha particles can only penetrate 0 0.05 millimeters. That is 1 20th of a millimeter that can't even get through the first layer of your skin, right? Beta particles can travel four to five millimeters into your skin. So about that far might get through your skin, probably not, probably absorbed by your skin. Gamma rays can travel 50 centimeters or more into your body. So 50 centimeters is like a foot and a half. You know, that could go all the way through your body, depending on which direction it hits, right? So these are deeply penetrating into your tissues. The type of shielding you need to protect yourself, you know, single sheet of paper, any clothing will stop alpha particles. Heavy clothing, lab coat, gloves, that's enough to stop beta particles. And gamma rays, you need lead or really thick concrete. And here are some sources for the different types of radiation. So radium, 226 emits alpha particles, carbon-14 emits beta particles, and technetium-99 emits gamma radiation. Study check. What type of radiation will be blocked by each of the following? Uh, lead shield. Well, lead shield is the best protection you can get, so that'll stop gamma rays and everything else. And what type of radiation is stopped by paper or light clothing? That's going to be the alpha particles. Now that we've talked about the types of radiation, let's talk about how we measure radiation. And so here's just the image of a geologist or radiation technician using uh, what's called a Geiger counter. And he's measuring the radioactivity coming off of these rocks here. So naturally occurring radioisotopes occur in rocks and certain rocks actually are radioactive and you can measure it if you uh, have the right device. So the Geiger counter is the device that's used to measure radiation. It's not sensitive enough to measure alpha particles, but it can detect beta and gamma radiation, which are the most harmful. So it's the most useful to detect anyways. Uh, I believe these were invented about 1920. 1920s uh, was when these first came about. Uh, it's a pretty small handheld device. It's got this uh, meter and then a detector and the radioactive sample that emits radiation hits the detector and it creates an electrical current, which goes back to the meter and you see this spike in electrical current and it makes a clicking sound. So you probably see in the movies you hear it, it's like, you know, when somebody's scanning stuff, um, that's a real sound. That's what these sound like. So every time a radioactive particle hits the screen, this thing makes a ticking sound. So the more ticks, the more radioactive something is. There are different units for measuring radiation. <clears throat> Excuse me. You do not need to know these. If you go into radiation therapy, you'll take a whole class on this. But just to expose you to the different units, there is the Curie, which is defined as the number of disintegrations that occur in one second for one gram of radium, which is equal to 3.7 times 10 to the 10th 
disintegrations per second. And when we say disintegration, we mean a single atom nucleus spitting off a particle of radiation. So 3.7 times 10 to the 10th is an extremely large amount of radioactive particles being spit off every second with a, a single gram of radium. So that's a lot. A becquerel is the SI unit of radioactive radioactivity, which is equivalent to one disintegration per second. So a becquerel is a really tiny unit of radiation measurement. The other unit we have is the RAD, which is an acronym for radiation absorbed dose. And that is defined as the amount of radiation absorbed by one gram of material such as body tissue. This is a measurement for radiation that's absorbed, not emitted. And the gray is the SI unit for an absorbed dose. And it's defined as the joules of energy absorbed by one kilogram of body tissue. So the first two here are units of radioactive emission, and these two are units of radioactivity absorbed. And the last unit is the REM, which stands for radiation equivalent in humans. And so this measures the biological effects of different types of radiation, including alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. Here is a chart showing different units of radiation. Here are the SI units, and here are the equivalents, uh, the e equalities, excuse me, relating the different uh, radiation units. So one Curie is 3.7 times 10 to the 10th Becquerels. One Gray is 100 Rads. One Sievert is 100 Rems. I'm not going to ask you to do any calculations, so you don't need to know this. This is just to expose you to it, so you've seen it before if you go into radiation later. Let's talk about some radiation exposure. You actually get exposed to radiation every day of your life naturally, just because there's radioactive isotopes all around us in the world. But there's not that many of them, and they're usually not concentrated in one place. And so you're not getting a large blast of radiation in your daily life. You're just getting exposed to little bits of radiation constantly. And that can occur from naturally occurring radioisotopes in the environment, uh, medical and dental procedures, uh, air travel, radon gas, smoking cigarettes exposes you to radiation, and cosmic rays coming from uh, the solar system or further in space actually um, can give you incoming radiation. This is a cool table. I'm going to zoom it in so you can see it. It shows the average annual radiation received by a person in the United States. So this is the amount of radiation you get per year from different sources. So just from the ground, from radioactive isotopes in the ground, you get about 20 millirems per year. From air, water, and food, you get about 30 millirems. Cosmic rays, coming in from the universe through the atmosphere, give you about 40 millirems. And wood, concrete, and brick gives you about 50 millirems per year. Medical procedures, uh, a single chest x-ray, or not a single one, but the amount of chest x-rays you get per year gives you about 20 millirems. A dental x-ray, 20, mammogram is 40. A hip x-ray gives you about 60 millirems. A lumbar spine x-ray is about 70. And a upper gastrointestinal tract x-ray exposes you to about 200 millirems. So you can see medical procedures expose you to a lot more radiation than you would normally get exposed to, but not significantly more. Uh, some other possible exposure sources that people think of as high, but actually maybe aren't. Nuclear power plants, uh, you only get 0 0.1 millirems of exposure from a nuclear power plant because we designed them to contain the radioactivity in the reactor. So it's not actually leaking radiation, out, assuming everything's going correctly and there's not a meltdown. But 
uh, nuclear power plants, if they're operating properly, actually emit very, very little radiation. You get much more just from the natural environment. Televisions expose you to maybe 20, not a lot. Air travel, about 10. Uh, and radon gas that occurs naturally can expose you to about 200, but this varies wildly depending on where you are and what you work with. So hopefully you found that interesting. You don't need to know any of these numbers. It was just for fun. And the last thing we'll talk about in this intro is radiation sickness. So radiation sickness occurs after you've been exposed to radiation and your tissues have been damaged and your body has to recover from that exposure more try to recover. So let's introduce this term LD50 here. LD50 stands for the lethal dose for one half of the population or 50% of the population. And the LD50 for radiation depends on several factors, but different life forms actually have different tolerances for radiation, actually. And so this table shows the amount of radiation needed to kill 50% of a population. And you can see insects can withstand 100,000 rems of radiation before it kills half the insects. That's crazy. So they are very, very resistant to radiation. Bacteria can survive 50,000 rems of radiation before half of the bacteria die, which is also a lot of radiation. Uh, rats can withstand about 800 rems. Humans, only 500. Dogs are even more susceptible than we are. Only about 300 rems uh, is enough to kill half of a dog population. So different susceptibility or tolerance to radiation depending on the type of organism. Not surprising, right? Like cockroaches survive everything. It's like big surprise to find out that insects can survive radiation as well. <laughs> so um, the take home message here is whole body radiation of 600 rems or greater would be fatal to anybody within a few weeks. So if you get blasted with 600 rems of radiation all at once, it's a death sentence and you will die within two weeks. That's a lot of radiation though. Most medical procedures are measured in milli rems. So like thousandths of a rem. So you would need, you know, 10,000 hip x-rays to, to get that much radiation. So most medical procedures give you very, very small amounts of radiation compared to the amount needed to kill you. Anyway, that wraps up the intro to radioactivity. And so in the next video, we'll start talking about <clears throat> balancing uh, radiation decay pathways. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.